Is there a way to make that a little bigger? That's good. Yeah, I'll dim them a little bit more. Okay, well, welcome. We're ready uh, for our third session. Yeah, hi, everyone. Yeah, thanks so much for being here. We got a few folks online. Session is being recorded. Uh, we'll post it to the YouTube channel tomorrow, but you guys are here in person, get to see all these incredible specimens that Denis has brought back. Uh, I haven't even seen this guy for like a month. He's yeah, it's true. Uh, MIA. It's true. I, <laughs> we've been doing a lot of foraging for mushrooms this summer. And uh, I mean, when the season ended here, um, I just got a little bit uh, a little sad. lonesome for it and <laughs> had to. I absolutely had to follow my heart and go to the Vancouver Island and all the Gulf Islands. So I did a wild tour. So this is going to be kind of a journey. Yeah. Exploring some of the cool species and what it's actually like to forage for these mushrooms. You kept sending me pictures. I'm like, oh my gosh. I'm like, wow. So, yeah. okay, we're in for a real treat. So yeah, thank you much, so much, Denise. Okay, let's see how it goes here. Yeah. So maybe let's the lighting just get a little bit brighter on the screen. Let's see how we're doing. Okay. Yeah, so for those of you that know me, um, Malcolm and I take people out foraging. In the summertime, we take people on groups, um, uh, mostly for medicinal plants. But sure enough, people are just so interested and intrigued in mushrooms. So I've been a mushroom forager for about 11 years now. I started getting into the medicinal mushrooms. It's really cool. So yeah, this is uh yeah, so here's a few pictures. <laughs> here's a few good pictures from the summer. Uh we've got this is from Alberta, right? So here is your uh giant puffball. Affectionately we called it poof poofy. It was it was kind of sad, but we had to slice it up and eat it. <laughs> Came our little friend. And yeah, so this year in Alberta, it was just going off. Um, that bucket, I had to start using buckets because my baskets were full. And literally, I filled that bucket in like 20 minutes. So I couldn't, it was just bonkers. Yeah, and I, I even got to get the chance to hang out with one of my personal heroes, Robert Rogers, who he's the author of The Fungal Pharmacy. He's got a really good field guide. You can pass this around and take a look. This is this is a great little field guide if you really want to start getting into forging for these mushrooms. Uh, Robert Rogers. He's got his most famous book is called Fungal Pharmacy. Yeah, he's. It was so it was a great honor to get to to go mushroom hunting with him. That was a treat. Yeah, this year we had so many of these, the Aspen Bolides. These are kind of like a porcini. They are, are Alberta's original mushroom. And yeah, but yeah, literally 20 minutes to fill your basket. I felt like a little squirrel. My, <laughs> my, uh, cause we, we actually brought a dehydrator. We had like three dehydrators along with us. So each day we would pick until, you know, the sun goes down and then and until two in the morning, we'd be slicing these. So I've got a nice dried supply of these guys. Let's see. <laughs> There's a, <laughs> so this is one of the better resources I recommend for everyone is to join the Alberta Mycological Society. It's through them that, uh, well, it's how I met Robert Rogers, and uh, this event uh, is called the Rat Root Rendezvous, and it happens every August. Search up the Rat Root Rendezvous, and uh, all the mycological society people come, and it's in this gorgeous property, and people basically roam around and bring mushrooms in to identify. So in the middle there, you can see and zoom in on that but there's martin osis and it just is so i'm still blown away by the diversity of species because there's definitely mushrooms like i still have no idea what the heck they are so 
one of these days when I'm gray and old, maybe I'll, you know, join and become a, join a, the society. Oh, oh, well, this was more of a display in a workshop. And, uh, but the whole area all around was crown land and we just, literally stuffed as many i couldn't even fit in the car on the way back that's how it's about three hours north to get to it's this uh kind of mushroom bonanza this is in alberta i'm just yeah this was my summer so far but yeah highly recommended each time i've been going to this rat root rendezvous for this is maybe my fifth year in a row it's very cool. It's like a bushcraft symposium. So it's all sorts of different workshops about bushcraft. So cool stuff like how to build shelters to sleep in with spruce boughs. And, but there's a lot of wild food stuff because there's a nice intersection there. So highly recommended event. Oh, yeah. So I got the mushroom fever. Um, and it's all, it's, it's it's actually thanks to Instagram, darn it. I've got friends. All my Instagram is just my friends that hunt mushrooms. And oh, man. So I got home. Calgary was all under snow. And uh, my friends are posting all these mushroom photos they, they're finding um, on Vancouver Island. So I had to, I had to follow my heart. And so, yeah, I got... And interestingly, I remember saying it out loud, like someone I got home, I was back talking with someone and I was like, you know, I might just go follow the mushrooms west. And sure enough, two days later, I got a call that one of my friends needs help moving to Vancouver Island. So I had to jump on the opportunity. Sorry, Malcolm, I am <laughs> going to be uh, gone for a little while. <laughs> two weeks. I was supposed to be gone for two weeks turned into three weeks, turned into four weeks. And there were still mushrooms out there. <laughs> it was really, really hard to leave. So what you see here, um, these are the Matsutake mushrooms. If anyone has heard of Matsutake, uh, the pine mushroom, they're very big. Well, these ones are very big. They can be as the big as buttons, but this is the mushroom that the Japanese will sometimes pay a hundred dollars for a single mushroom. And it's identifiable by its smell. When it's, fr you can smell it and it has like a cinnamon-esque kind of flavor, which is, uh, it's kind of fun to use your nose in the forest because sometimes you can smell these mushrooms. It's so fascinating. So yeah, the Matsutake, absolutely delicious. We ate those and, uh, it's it's such an interesting feeling when you're eating the wild mushrooms. It really makes you feel like you're a part of the land, right? That you're it makes you feel like part of the forest. So yeah, very interesting. But definitely it's one of those feelings like, wow, forest is totally feeding me here. One of the cool things about the mushrooms is the more you pick them, it stimulates more mushrooms to grow grow. So by picking the mushrooms, you actually, uh, they multiply. If you go to Italy, for example, or, or Poland, where they pick so many mushrooms, you'll see they have these huge populations. So it's my job to pick more and more of these mushrooms. So more and more of them. Uh, as far as it goes for these ones, but not necessarily for, some of the others here we're going to get into. Yeah, absolutely. There's the spores. We'll, we'll get into some of the spores too. But yeah. Yeah, in your footsteps, mushrooms will grow. <laughs> but yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty exciting. That was the biggest one we've ever found. But yeah, basically, this is what it looks like. <laughs> that's actually we cross like that's quite a chasm like we're crossing rivers and streams on fallen logs 
the West Coast is a harsh place. The forest there is actually a harsh place. Like, it's wet. It's just so wet. You're slipping and sliding all over the place. And it's actually really tough to move through that bush. It is, uh, but it is, so yeah, you can see some of these trees, you have to climb over them and say, like, whoa, I'm trying to get over them. And it's a maze. But yeah, it's not easy getting, and this is where we want to go into, we need to get into the old growth forest to find some of these mushrooms. But yeah, that's my bud, Simon. And he's like seven foot tall, something, so. <laughs> yeah, it's hard to capture the majesty out there in the old forest. Okay, so, yeah, this is what we really sit and put our intentions to go and hunt and find. That's, that's what we were after, the Canadian wild reishi. And it's super nifty that we do have this growing in Canada. Um, so this is the West Coast Reishi, Ganoderma oregonensis. The Ganoderma from Oregon. Ganoderma meaning a shining, the shining skin. Because oh, well, that one I kept, definitely kept as a specimen. Some of the ones that more I would use for medicine were probably about that big across. Yeah, it's very cool. The this red color is actually they call it a lacquered conch is one of its name, varnished conch, completely natural. And it, it is the same substance as an insect's exoskeleton. So it has chitin. So fascinating. And Reishi is the only mushroom that really is red like that. Only a few. Oh, oh, um, it's super to be our east coast. See, you you can find it on maples apparently in in uh, Quebec and Ontario. It likes hemlock. It likes it grows ex pretty much exclusively on hemlock. So you can find it in the East Coast and the West Coast, but yeah, you need to find the hemlock. There's reports of uh, reishi growing as far inland as, um, you know, the Kootenai. So it does, it grows wherever hemlock grows going around. So the other really cool thing about this mushroom is that it is annual. So when you find this mushroom, it'll grow again in the same place. So once you have a spot, the, the, the reishi will be, the reishi is a decomposer of fallen trees or dead trees. You'll find them on dead tall trees or you'll find them on the logs on the ground. So basically it, is, it will appear every year, the reishi at the same tree until it has eaten the whole tree. So pretty nifty, we, we've got a few good spots now. Well, uh, <laughs> this one I went, was on Cortez Island, I believe, where there's a lot of crown land. So you do have to go into the crown land. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's so cool. Like, uh, that's what it looks like inside. So you slice them up like this. The finer the surface area, the better. It smells like very nice. Pass that around. <laughs> Oh, it's hard. Like it's hard. Like wood once it dries. It when it's fresh, you can slice it very easily. So, yeah, best idea is to slice it right when you get it, and then uh, dry them like that. But yeah, the West Coast is interesting because it's so moist. So we had some trouble. Uh, keeping them dry. So we just kept them intact till we brought them home. So yeah, there, there's the uh, Ganoderma and it was so cool. Okay, yeah, we have a question over here. Oh, it's just dried, yeah. That's, he just dried, yeah. Super, yeah, it's a beauty. It's like something out of Jurassic Park. 
when you're walking through this forest and whoa, just this red thing pops out at you. Yeah. Yes, when you, we had a lot of work to do when we got back to slice them. But yeah, we had a we had a lot of fun, like uh and we made friends everywhere. That's one of the cool things about mushroom foraging. We made friends everywhere. So we met this old dude, he had a huge property, and we just got to talking and he started telling us his wife has arthritis, inflammation, and tinnitus, like ringing in her ears. And it's like, wow. That's what reishi, reishi is amazing for that. Let's see, if I've got a, yeah, good as gold, there's your slices. They're amazing. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's, uh, that's like uh, more uh, realistic sizes of the reishis. But you'll notice it does look like ears. And so reishi is known to be incredibly beneficial for tinnitus, ringing the ears. Uh, it's good for the kidneys and adrenals. It's it's also good for the liver. You can kind of see that like liver color. Well, it's one of the more bitter mushrooms, but it's also good for the heart. Oh my gosh, the benefits of reishi are pretty endless. It's like, once you start getting into it, but <laughs> definitely it feels, it's a funny feeling to find them. And they do kind of call you. They, I could, we would go explore one day a spot. Simon, we got to go back to that spot and go that way because there's got to be one there. I feel it. And sure enough, that was all on one tree there. So we call it the race, the grove of five ratios. Oh, a question. Yeah. Yeah. What's, what's the difference uh, between the Canadian ones and the Canadian ones? Um, uh, oh, the question from the audience was, what is the difference between the wild Canadian reishi and something like Ling Zi, or like the reishi? Well, that one is very similar to the real reishi. Uh, so I would say probably I almost identical, if not better properties. It's cool because you can actually cultivate, you can, you can grow reishi. It just takes a long time to fruit, but uh, I'd like to see more people growing uh, the wild Canadian variety. Oh, so that there's your Ganoderma organensi, the red reishi. And then here we are, Oh yeah, and I just thought it was so funny that literally this guy is telling us about how everything he needs, um, arthritis and all this stuff. And literally he has he had the wild reishi growing like right behind his house. He did he had, he had been living there for 30 years and didn't know. So they're gonna report back to us if it helps his wife's tinnitus, the ringing in the ear. <laughs> Definitely is fun. Yeah, it's a, that was my quest. I came home with, you know, I probably got a couple of gallons of dried slices from the reishi, so that's great. And then, so there's another relative of the reishi. This is the artist's conch. So there's my friend Simon uh, with a really big one. Um, the artist's conch is really cool. Ganoderma aplanatum. So it's a relative. It's it's a cousin of the red reishi. Um, research might be suggesting that this one is even better than the red reishi in some ways. It's uh, This one, though, is actually perennial. So you see the layers on the back. They actually, that's each year it has grown. So this is three years old. And they can reach some astonishing sizes out there. There's a Ganoderma aplanatum. So, so yeah, this one, um, 
It's called the artist's conk because when it's fresh, you can actually scratch the little uh, you can scratch little drawings in the bottom. So people are yeah, people like to draw on them, but equally like uh, I think I'd rather drink it as a tea. Yeah, they're pretty cool. And that br brings the question like, uh, how do you prepare something like this? So when it's sliced up like this uh, and dried, you can store these for years and years. It's, it's one of those herbs that does not really degrade over time. Uh, the medicinal compounds are very stable. But basically you do what in Chinese medicine they call, you make a broth of the mushroom. So Vivian and uh, Brittany, they added uh, some reishi into their bone broth as an example. You have to decoct it is the, is the word. So it's a long-term simmer at low temperature. So a crock pot works really well with, with the water. You know, I would do probably like, and you can re-brew them many times. You can re-brew them th three or four times. So, yes. And uh, the other thing that people like to do with this is tincture it. So that's soak it in a vodka for two weeks or so. And the alcohol will do a really good job of pulling out the medicinal compounds. In uh, in Russia, they don't call it a tincture. They call it a medicated vodka. But what's interesting is that this herb is very good for the liver. So in an alcohol extract form, it actually targets the liver. So really cool. Really fun stuff. Yeah, my friend Simon uh, filled it. Those are actually petroglyphs from West Coast rock art. So those are all petroglyphs found uh, on the West Coast, on the, on the back of that one. Pretty nifty stuff. So you can find, you can find Aplanatum here in Alberta. This is one of the ones that we do find here in Alberta. So keep your eyes out. And even I've seen it in Calgary in people's yards. It likes to grow on poplar and uh, this kind of stuff. So I, yeah, I found it in, in my friend's backyard before. Well, one of the more important things is that you're picking them and they're not moldy. Because sometimes on the bottom, you know, you wouldn't want to ingest that if it has decayed and died. So that's the only really thing you have to watch out for. The question from the audience is like, how do you know what you're picking? Uh, and uh, you know, another one of the great resources I'd recommend to you guys is join on Facebook some of the mushroom identification groups. The Alberta Mycological Society has a great group on Facebook. And you just post your photos there. People are very happy to check them out. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the other one that was in huge quantities out there. The turkey tails. I should have brought some uh, to show. Um, the turkey tails are just growing in prolific abundance out there. There's fallen trees just covered with this stuff. I find it interesting that this is definitely one of the mushrooms that has become very popular recently with uh, <laughs> Paul Stamets. Talks a lot about this one and people are really, there's a big demand for this mushroom. So that's what makes me so happy. The forest is just so happy to provide this kind of medicine for us. Because the big thing about the turkey tail, of course, is immunity and, uh, and you know, anti-tumors and this kind of stuff. There's a lot of science backing up these medicinal mushrooms. There's some great books out there, but anti-inflammatory, stress relieving, and yeah, kind of cute. They're beautiful too. So... As far as these conks go, um, what's the best time to be picking these mushrooms? Turkey tails will be all year long. When you're picking them, you just want to make sure they're integral, not 
you know, because these things do have a life cycle. They they live until they run out of food and then they they go, start to decompose too. But yeah, lots and lots of turkey tails. So that's one of the big things that we hunted for and brought back a lot. Because people are asking for this stuff left, right, and center. Shaking us down for our turkey tails. <laughs> and it was funny to be in the forest because we, of course, started calling to them. <laughs> so it was fun. We were making turkey noises and the turkey tails would reveal themselves to us and they would just show up. And then it was super, all the animals would come check us out. Squirrels, the birds, what are these guys doing? It's kind of fun. Okay, so that's another species that we did find out there, the red-belted polypore. This is another one that's very common in um, Alberta. Kind of looks like ears. But this is one of my more favorite mushrooms to drink as a tea. I find that this mushroom really produces a state of relaxation. It's a red-belted conch is like a zen mushroom. You just relax. It's one of the, it's very stress relieving. So this is, if you ever see this, uh, these gutations, they're called gutations. It's uh, actually exuding out of the mushroom. It's not dew. It is very recommended to slurp it, slurp <laughs> the gutations. They taste super weird, but it's for very, it's super refreshing when you're stuck out there. Yeah, there, there's another species for you. And this is one that you will find in Alberta. If you, this is one of the most common species. So Fomatopsis pinicola is the Latin name. So it likes pine trees. It likes to grow on pine trees and a, a lot of different conifers. It'll grow on different conifers, but you need to get into the forest basically. The red belt, aha! So this was super cool. This is such a rare mushroom and it's super, this was super fun to find. This is the famous agaricon. Has everyone heard of the agaricon? Uh, so agaricon is a very rare mushroom. Um, it's one of the endangered mushrooms. So we just, we've just left this alone. They'll, sometimes they'll fall off the trees and stuff. This one's four or five years old. Each of those rings is a ring of growth. So we definitely were just like, wow, this is so nifty. Agaricon actually has a taste. It's like a little licorice or anise, but it's one of the more antiviral of the herbs. Uh, one of its names is quinine conch because it was used as a substitute for quinine. If any of you, uh... yes, yes, malaria, it's a, uh... It's super, it's got a super weird flavor. So I do have a tincture of the agaricon. My friend Simon made this uh, from apparently, uh, it's, yeah, it's so rare. But if you want a taste of it. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, just to maybe uh, have a drop of that, if you can, just a drop. You'll see what it does. It, it'll com it completely coats your throat with a very interesting sweetness. Like there's no sh sweetness added to that mushroom. It's, uh, you'll notice it's very interesting. Yeah, one of the best things there is for, yeah, very powerful stuff. Uh, and so this is the case where you don't really want to, you do, you want to be very careful harvesting this one, but breaks my heart to see the West coast. We were looking at the satellites, right. To find places to pick the mushrooms and geez, um, I should pull up a picture of the satellites of what's happening there for the forestry. But yeah, we were definitely like big trucks driving past us and, I'm betting you they just, you know, they don't even know what this is, agaricon. That mushroom could be worth, honestly, it's worth 
something like 300 bucks at that stage. But they can get huge. So this is definitely a case for like, maybe we should, we, we should be protecting this as an endangered species. Oh, where is it growing there? So that is on the bottom of a, of a big fallen tree. There's a big fallen tree, huge. As you can see, that was a big tree. That, and there's my friend Simon, so. Oh, so agaricon is the, the, the tremendously antiviral. Queenine conch. If you guys have, remember all this, what is it? Hydrochloroquinone or whatever. It's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's totally in this one. Oh, very rare. We did not pick that. Uh, yeah, we just. You, this one, uh, some people cultivate it, yes. Um, I think uh, my friend Simon uh, just had someone send one to him. They didn't know what it was, but it was a. They can get massive, like general, I know, enormous. So that's just a baby. Yeah, and sometimes they'll fall on the ground, and yeah, you'll want them to. Yeah, so that was pretty fun. We nibbled on that. Okay, and then I guess for the rest, we're just gonna do a quick uh, power through some of the more species we got here. Okay, so we were definitely finding lion's mane. We found a couple lion's manes. The, of course, lion's mane is the one famous for memory, re regenerating the nerves of the brain. And it's really interesting, like actually, so we tinctured this one fresh. So it's way different than using, uh, it's very different than a dried one. So when you, uh, apparently when they're fresh, uh, <coughs> Uh, you've got a lot more flavor compounds and stuff, aromatics, I guess, when they dry. But yeah, you definitely feel so the way to take this tincture. Like, we just had a jug of vodka with us. <laughs> yeah, the way to really feel it is if you take a whole ounce of that. So it's kind of like drinking a whole tincture bottle, but you'll start to feel... I can only... Like, explain it as a saintly halo <laughs> i i was understanding how what those saints were uh <laughs> yeah so that's so exciting to find those and uh it's super cool yeah and basically a basket just fills up within like that was 20 minutes into the walk ah okay i think it's coming up here uh that's a lobster mushroom that's lobster yeah, there's a few cool species in there, but those artists comp there uh, are pretty nifty. Okay, well, so there's just a, that's like a picture of uh, what we brought back in one day. So up on the top here, you can see chanterelles, the orange guys, chanterelles. Oh man, they're so good. I could eat chanterelles for a little for lunch and breakfast and dinner and dessert. Next to them is a very interesting species there. The, the black looking guys are relatives of morel mushrooms. And they are, um, they're related to morels and people all across Finland and Scandinavia eat them. But if you eat them fresh, you can die. <laughs> So apparently if you dry them and cook them, you're okay. Uh, or cook them exchange, and exchange the water a couple times, parboil them. Yeah, people have even died from like boiling them in the water and like lifting the lid of the pot and smelling the steam. And like it was some French chef and he was making this big batch and he, he, got, he died right like that. <laughs> so that's a more advanced one. I haven't tried eating them yet, but I do intend to. This violet character, the purple guys, uh, I might have a better picture of that coming up here, but they're uh, they're apparently edible too. So that's another one that I um, just discovered that is edible. 
But yeah, there's your lion's manes in the middle there, reishis, turkey tails, usnea lichens. So it's super cool and super fun. Uh, but that's just one day of picking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We wish we had started doing this every time we came back. Because we, we were like, you know, 14 or 15 days in a row like this. And we should we, we should have been doing that. Okay. So a little tour of some of the edibles. Yeah, there's the lobster mushrooms. They're uh, very easy to identify the lobster mushroom and very delicious edible. Uh, you have to smell it to believe it because it definitely smells like lobsters. But dried, it makes such a good soup. And we actually picked a whole bunch of them with the intention of using them for dye because you it makes such a cool color for wool. So we got, that's one of the projects we're working on to, to provide uh, pigments for people. Yeah, oh, so that's one of my favorite ones we found. That's called the cauliflower mushroom, Sparasus crispus. This one is fantastic. It's uh, uh, one of the best edible mushrooms there is. It cooks up just like egg noodles. So you stir, it's oh, absolutely unbelievable. And you'd be surprised how many people invite you into their house when you show, <laughs> have these mushrooms. Yeah, yeah you, can, you, should, you, should, you guys should come for dinner. Oh, you know, so this is one that I don't know much about medicinally. One, a lot of the edible mushrooms are very medicinal when you eat them because passing through the digestive tract, uh, they're actually known to relieve stagnation. Uh, mushrooms, that's one of the big reasons shiitake mushrooms are so beneficial. Um, you want to hear a joke? <laughs> Okay. Um, have you heard about the mushroom that was uh, constipated? You had a terrible shit achy. <laughs> ah! Oh, yeah. But yeah, uh, definitely that's one of the benefits of eating the mushrooms. And it's another one of these cases where, whoa, you really feel like you're made of the forest when you eat this stuff. But the forest is feeding and nourishing you. All right, there's agaricus. So we were eating mushrooms literally every darn day. That's relative of the common button mushroom. I was sending agaricuses back to my, <laughs> back to home. Oh, there's the violet lacaria, which is so beautiful. And it's this is a new edible to me. So I've got these dried and I am excited to eat them because I actually dream you dream so vividly out there but I was dreaming I was like in some sort of weird cooking contest and I was serving these apparently you're only supposed to eat the caps on those ones oh there's those elven saddles a big abundance of those out there so again kind of like a morel oh there's the biggest of the chanterelles I found yeah that one is so good thanks Yes, chanterelle. That's one that grows in the moss in the old growth forest. It was so cool. We got this hot tip that there was this old growth area. And we went to visit. And not only did we get into this grove with like a huge tree that had some reishi, um, the whole carpet, it was carpeted with chanterelles. So we were eating well. We were eating well. That's <laughs> exciting. There's your shaggy parasol. This is actually, this one you can find in Alberta. That one is a really yummy edible too. That was fantastic. Super cool. There's your oyster mushrooms. So really cool. And what you see there is a spore print. So one of the things that I really want to get into next is getting the wild species and propagating them. So potentially you could grow these oysters. Um, back, oh, so yeah, that's that's a few of the species there. And yeah, back to Alberta, I had to go. 
but <laughs> very next day I get called to so I'm I'm still at it. That was that was a uh, chaga hunt up here in Alberta. So we still have great mushrooms all winter here. Uh, so yeah, the chaga is super cool. It takes a lot of tromping through the forest to find that. That I wonder. I wish I I didn't wouldn't want to wear one of those smart watches, but you could like measure your steps and see how many clicks, how many kilometers you do. That's off the birch trees. So they're, uh, yeah, it's super fun, super yummy. Oh, <laughs> yeah, there's the, that's this guy, the biggest guy we found. But yeah, I guess in conclusion, well, and did everyone really get a kind of cool glimpse into what the diversity really is out there? Is it amazing, like, that we have these in the wild? Yes, if you yeah, there's quite a community of foragers across Canada. We got friends everywhere. But yeah, I hope this gives you a good idea. I do make a medicinal mushroom. Uh, like I make a, I actually have to get to work because I do make uh, medicinal extracts and stuff. Uh, my friend Simon actually right now is set up. It's funny, the old light cellar, there's a holiday market in there. So if you like that agaricon, you can head over there or send us an email. Um, yeah, this will be available soon. I kind of wanted to do a little, uh, yeah. And if you have Instagram, uh, that's where I post. I do post my stuff on Facebook too. So on Instagram, it's forage your food is my, uh, the one where I post my mushroom stuff. But you can follow Denny Manzer. Oh, uh, which one? <laughs> oh, the Elven Saddles. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I should send that there. Yeah, I, if you're ever out there, I recommend you get this book. But yeah, and then i to do a little shout out to Malcolm and I's project. We've been working on the Forager's Forecast. So it's up on the, our, it's on our web store. You can sign up and basically, this is a platform for Malcolm and I to speak freely about some of the medicinal benefits of these plants. Uh, so every, you know, every week almost, you get a video of a new plant that's local, that's in season. It kind of gives you an idea like, okay, what to look for, what do we got going on? Nice. Do you get access to the library from previous videos, or is it only the Yeah, you probably should do that. It's the latest, and you can keep them and save them, that kind of thing. But yeah, we don't have them archived in that way. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's kind of rolling, ongoing. Yeah. It's nine bucks a month. Yeah, or less if you get the annual. And just follow yeah, current subscription. Okay, I've got a skill testing question. If who can remember the Latin name of this guy? Uh, Mars. Uh, not quite. This is especially this Friday. Okay, well, Jessica. Oh. Yeah. You win. Uh, you win a few of these slices to take home. Hey, well, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Um, I hope you enjoyed it completely. Yeah. So we better make sure for our next people in here. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah, come and see the little holiday market down there. Yeah, so Dude. feel free to continue to connect with Denise and the break. We're just going to take maybe a five.